Matthew Stafford? He can't win a playoff game. Yeah. Like, that's where I want to say screw off to all the Matthew Stafford haters of the world. The team matters. It's a real thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm coming in hot today. That's right. Right off the bat, we're coming off and coming on pissed off, making points. I'm going to try to be nicer, okay? I am. I always feel like I'm defending myself during this top 40 countdown. And I have friends calling me, like, and literally who watch the pod, and they're like, hey, I watched the pod. You're doing great, man. I know it stresses you out. And I'm like, well, how do you know? And they're like, I can see it. When I watch you, it actually makes me uncomfortable. And so I I'm can like, just tell that you care. I do care. You I do. do it with a smile they on know your that. Face. I try yeah. to, yes. I, what, I, what I get mad at myself is for when I clap back or get a little bit angry at the questions from the homies because I'm just trying to defend a point. Point, and I think it can come sun, sound a little personal. So I'm going to try to work on that during this uh, okay. podcast right here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to rub my ears <laughs> and take deep breaths and say USA. All right. So here we are. Chris Sims on button. Paul Burmeister's here as usual on a Wednesday. He's looking good. He's in all blue. I'm in all black. No, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's what we do. And then we got Big Phil on the way today. I heard that. All right. From about an hour from now, he's going to jump in and he's got three subjects that are on his chest. And as you usual i've been texted the subjects i don't know what the hell he wants to say about them so we'll just let him fly and that's always fun and then we got four more quarterbacks on the quarterback countdown yes we are getting into the ballers of the ballers yeah. we've already got into the ballers of the ballers honestly in I my know. opinion yeah. yeah you know really from from really but i would almost go from 14 down we we, we hit that kind of baller Yes. Uh, esque type of quarterback here, but we're getting to the special ones now. And the way the league is now, hey, maybe Matthew Stafford comes up today, maybe not. You don't know. You'll have to wait and see. But eight <laughs> through five is coming, and it's a uh, it's a good four we're going to talk about today. I thought I thought the uh, the the real list like uh, okay, it's real now. It's sixteen. Yeah. I think it was a week ago. Sixteen. Yeah, that's where we you got it. Kurt, when you hit 13, Kirk Cousins, like, yeah, okay. Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield. That's where okay. I, I'm with you. That's we're where not, I started to go. These are legit starting quarterbacks. We're not here. creating. I, I'm not like ignoring the kids at breakfast trying to think of things to bring up about this guy. No, like, you're right. These are all guys we could do an entire podcast about, to I, be honest. I, you're right. I think they're guys that you can sit there and and, and really like just go, they're franchise quarterbacks, period. Yes. You, yeah. you don't look to replace this guy just Every to replace him. Today. No yeah. doubt about it. And today, yeah, we're going to get into some, some really big-time football players. So I always come in on Wednesday, or yeah. that's the way the rhythm this has been. I'd like to check in as we see what you were up to, the top 40 up to now. I think you guys went 12 through 9 on Monday yeah. with Ahmed. So I'd like to check that out. You went Kyler Murray, and we're moving down here. Derek Carr at 11, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott. Yep. How'd it go? How'd it, it went good. the last couple it went, days? Well, it went okay. I think people are a little bit like with the Deshaun Watson one, just yeah, like, wait, yeah. he's better than that. And I, as I've said, I, I don't know what to say. It's hard. He's a hard placement. And you had he didn't do anything. Right. Right. I understand when he's playing and really well, he's in the top five conversation. I get that. But he hasn't practiced. So that's one I think that's been talked about a lot. You know, I think the Dak, the Lamar Jackson being a 10 has probably got a few people on social media thinking that's a hair low. And then even the really? fact that hmm. Dak Prescott you know, maybe above him. One thing I saw on some of my social media stuff is people thought, well, you spoke more glowingly about Lamar Jackson than you did Dak Prescott. And I probably did. L Lamar excites me. So I get excited yeah. talking about him. He, as I discussed when he came up, he's one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the game, still one of the biggest play quarterbacks and most electric guys in the game. So that, that does get me. But I do think with all that excitement and I love, and maybe I should have done better in the last podcast, is I'm still, yeah, right now, do I think Dak Prescott Scott's a hair better. I do. Yes, because Dak, I, I trust his decision making and some of the stuff he does in the pocket a little bit more than Lamar. And to me, that that's the difference making. Even though like Lamar's electric and maybe more big playability, mm -hmm. it's not like Dak's not. Dak makes a lot of big plays with his arm. Right. And a lot more big plays that maybe aren't as sexy and excite you because it's just not as cool. But I still sit there when I watch it on film and go, that is one hell of a play. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's the plays where you know, I, I described this of Dak, and you could probably picture this, him in the pocket, you know, makes a move. He's got people all over him, and he's got somebody hitting him and maybe even grabbing him on his shoulder, and he still throws a 25, 30-yard throw down the football field to where, yeah, it might not make the highlight show that night, but, but you go away and go, man, he makes three it, or yeah. four of those every game that you know are different there. And I trust him with the ball a little bit more right. than Lamar Jackson at this point. 
Did you have Dak moved up a little from last year? No, actually a little lower. Was it really? Right, yeah. So he I mean, was in the top ten last yeah, year? Yeah, I think okay. last year I had him at seven or eight maybe, Pete. I think I had him right around that range. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a little lower. Did yeah. he have as good a year? No, he fell off a hair. There's injuries, I think, involved in that. Oh, and I did. I had him nine last nine year. nine last year. So, okay. he had injuries. I know that. And I think the biggest reason he's at nine still is just, again, we had a few guys that, you know, balled out last year yeah, and she said, time. I'm I'm the real deal, and it's time for me to be in the Chris Sims top ten. I'm looking at that chunk of four, and the yeah. guy you started with, Kyler Murray. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of news going on right now, and uh-huh. kind of questioning, you know, what's the fall, what's the summer going to look like for him? There was, a, there was a long time last year in the season, September, October, November, where it looked like he'd be a top five. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I, I can't look at somebody in the top 20 and find another – that had that kind of tailspin. Yeah, sure, I know. As he did last year. Yeah, no, I, I think. W- what's the reaction been to him at twelve? Yeah, you know, I don't. I mean, I think people think that's a little too low too. But I don't know. I feel like Pete and maybe Pete can answer this a little bit more. I feel like I have. We haven't got that. Like it hasn't been that critical. Yeah. As far as you know, he's concerned. Derek Carr had a phenomenal year. Yeah, he did. You know, uh, Kyler Murray again. I think it's a little bit like the Lamar Jackson conversation where you go wow 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 and there's a lot of electric but, but there's a lot of little plays that I want to go back and I'd love to just spend a whole podcast on and go, "Hey, look, I know he made this play and this play and we go wow wow wow, but here's now the next drive and there's like two or three plays where I go, oh, "See, but this should be this yeah. throw down the middle should be made or yeah, I know the pocket's collapsing, but the 10 guys in front of him all stand there and make that throw in the pocket and then he didn't right and he threw it away or he scrambled for four and we go whoa he got out of trouble for four there and i want to yeah. you know it goes back to something everybody hears me say a lot where i go yeah he scrambled for four but there was a 15 yard completion down the middle if he just stood there and took the hit and all that and that's where it gets real nitpicky and weighing some of these guys and yeah. kind of picking them apart here and with, i think with kyler as well you can't ignore the timing of his of his worst play well of the i season. think that's part of it too I mean, that no matters. doubt about I mean, it wherever yeah. aaron Rodgers shows up up here today or next week i mean i gotta think he's gonna he, the, that ranking will have been affected by what he did in his last game as well kyler the same thing well i think they the show timing matters a lot the timing matters i don't let that affect me a whole lot but i think what happens is we see the timing and what happens really to me more than anything is the problem with the player starts to get exposed at the end of the year when you're in the playoff cup because you start to play teams that are in the playoffs. And right. they start to go, we're going to take away the easy things you yeah. do so good and all your offense does so well. So now you're getting into, wait, these are the things you're not as good at, and let's see if you got any better here for the playoffs. And can you correct it? And I think that's where it's like those issues that I talk about with Murray and all that, they were there all year long. It's just early in the year they were – flying high teams were still not caught on to the offense all the way and they were making plays on the defensive side of the ball to where he didn't get put into oh wait you got to drive the ball consistently here and you have to stand in the pocket and make a lot of big throws and that's to me that's what happened in the end of the year he started to play some better teams Mm -hmm. teams like the colts the packers you know the rams Rams, twice right and they said you're not going to run around and make all these electric plays you have to stand here and make quarterback plays and i think that's where you know kind of reared its ugly head Okay. Yeah. Warm up. Yeah, a little warm good. up. That was good. It got me good. Going. Got the got yeah, the mouth greased up. Here we go. Because yeah. you need to be warm for this next guy. Uh huh. Where we're starting. Yeah. Yeah. That's love right. It. You yeah. love it. I know. I'm I happy mean, you saved this for 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 dude number one on my day. I did. I saved them for I you. Appreciate we, that. We we yeah. mapped it out to make sure, sure you did. that you were yeah. on here. Yeah. With the number eight quarterback in football. Yes. Tom Brady, which I guess a lot of people will be mad. I guess. Of course. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but holy shit, the guy's 45 and he's a top 10 quarterback in football. Mm-hmm. All right. There's that. He is the GOAT. Okay. He's the GOAT. I've, I've changed my stance. You know, I, people have heard me say, and I used to say, I don't know if he's the greatest quarterback of all time. He is. I, I can't deny that anymore. I'm not going to be selfish and continue to, like, bang my head on the wall. And, and no, no. You talk about consistent greatness, what he does, all that. It's special. And I think the thing that's even more special to me about Brady and what he's doing right now, and I'm more amazed of, is he is – more aggressive and more of a playmaker mm. at the quarterback position now than maybe he's been the last four or five, six years, even yeah. going into New England. Do you think he's better than, he, than he's ever been? I think he's up there. I think it's very mm, – yes, I, I do. I'm not going to say ever, but I think what we've seen, let's just say, you know, over the last – Let's say that second run of Super Bowls with mm-hmm. the with the Patriots and now into this. 
I think it, it it definitely rivals his best days there and that last second stretch with the Patriots. Right. You know, and I think the biggest thing to me is, you know, even when they were going to three out of four Super Bowls there at the end with the Patriots, you know, he he still played a game that at times I thought was, hey, he he's very conservative and he doesn't have to make, you know, many plays outside the realm of the offense and, you know, you know, at times to maybe a little too conservative. Hey, make a play, make a throw. You know, hang in there a half a second more, push the ball down the field. Mm-hmm. You know, felt like maybe he was playing politics of the sport to a degree. Mm. Also, maybe, hey, he knew, he knew he was with the Patriots, and hey, Josh McDaniels will dial up a good play the next play. Yeah. And I don't have to be aggressive. I think that was part of it. But, Paul, I, I mean, you, you watch him closely like I do. You know, he he's now makes more throws and changes the game in more positive ways from the Bucks than I feel like, yeah, he ever did the last few years with the Patriots just because of, hey, Bruce Arians, the yeah. talent around him. I do think Bruce Arians and Byron Leftwich got him to break out of the shell, mm. to go like, stop worrying. To if be you, more aggressive. Yeah, maybe? stop worrying if you throw for 73.4%. Let's mm-hmm. throw for 66% yeah. and just be more dangerous of an offense yeah. and have teams scared. And then you're making more big plays. But, yeah, maybe the ball hit the ground once. To me, he's more dangerous that way. And he's a more aggressive decision maker. His arm is still towards the top of football as far as standing there in the pocket and making throws. And because of that, yeah, he still makes a lot of game-changing plays just with his right arm and his decision making. I have a page of notes here that uh, I I saw your ranking, went back and watched some of the key games this year. And you've kind of answered these a little bit, but I want to make sure that they're framed and, and people understand. Please I, do. I, I think they're on they're on people's minds. Yeah, they both begin with why. The why? first one, why did he improve from ten last year to eight this year? Yeah, I think the big thing I looked at more than anything is, you know, last year, and again, maybe this played into it. I think early in the year, he was like a little bit playing the politics, learning the new when offense. When you say play the politics, you mean exactly like what? I mean like he wasn't going to make any dicey decisions because it might get back blamed on me. Yeah, and. Uh, I think what happened, to, in, in my opinion, at least, is they got hot at the other, at end of the 2020 season. They won the Super Bowl. And now and we got a guy like Bruce Arians and left, which always prodding them and poking. Come on, push it down the field. Right. Hang in there. Make the big play. We drew this up. You like the play all week. Do it. Do it. I think the pressure of, wait, I'm on a new team. It worked. I won the Super Bowl. It kind of let him go like, well, I'm, I'm taking my best cuts here during this football game. I am. And, and I'm going to go. And the thing I love about Brady compared to maybe even years in New England that I love is like to the politics point he goes down swinging now Mm -hmm. to me like they're like the some of the games like we've seen with the Saints or even the Rams playoff game yeah I think Brady four years ago crawls into a shell a little bit and is like oh man I threw three interceptions or I've thrown two interceptions I haven't played well I'm gonna you know just make sure we don't lose any more because of me Mm. and I feel like now he goes that I'm gonna throw my fucking heater and we're gonna win this game. I'm not gonna like just knock the play to ha- not have it blamed on me. I'm gonna bring us back. And what had happened in some of those games is lending itself to more interceptions. Sure. sure. But I think there's other games we can look at and go, yeah, but if he had that old mindset, they don't know if they come back against some of these teams. I don't know if they make the Rams game close and all of that. Right. And that to me is because, yeah, Arians, the, the comfort around him, I think they've given him confidence. And I think, honestly, he's become a little bit more of a confident gunslinger type of yeah, player, yeah. For, for lack of a better way to say it. His, his two seasons with the Bucks, I mean, basically he's thrown for 10,000 yards, which is amazing. Yep. His completion percentage, you talked about he's more willing to, to be risky. He's still at two-thirds. He's right yeah. at 67%. Yeah, right. Um, touchdown to interception ratio better than three to one. So within all that, he's more still interceptions, taking... but more touchdowns. There you go. So there it goes. Exactly. Yes. Right. I feel like when I watch him, the the, the two things that stand out right yeah. now in his years in Tampa, one, the conviction is as good as anybody. It's like yes. he's standing there, line of scrimmage, cadence. Yes, he's barking it out, but he's got this. I know what you're doing. I know where the ball's supposed right. to go. Give me the ball. Right. He's got that thing, no doubt, and his talent to deliver it still is as good as it's ever been his effect on the team which is a huge part of my thing his leadership is real yeah it's as maybe as big as anybody in football right you know with what he can give during the week and game planning and everything yeah then to your top point the leadership on the field giving the team confidence hey it's Tom Brady's our quarterback we got a chance to win oh wait we're playing a crazy defense well Brady will figure it out scrimmage, like you're talking about yeah and give us confidence and get us in the right play right so his effect on the football team you know and it's something that I took into 
do more of, I think, an account this year in my rankings than maybe years past. Uh, there's another reason I would say he maybe bumped him up a spot or Good. two. Yeah. Just because I kind of readjusted my thought on that to a degree as well. I feel like, too, the, the kind of box that he's playing in. So, like, if, if you can picture north to south, kind of line of scrimmage to 20 to 25 yards. Yeah. And, like, now the full length east-west. So, yeah. north, south, east-west. He's he's playing with, with with a bigger box of what he's looking at Definitely. with backs, receivers, and tight ends than he did in New England. Agreed. He makes you defend more of the field yes. now than yeah. he used to. Right. That and that to me is where he's become more dangerous. Yeah. That, exact, that that was the point, and I think that's the best way to say it. Yeah, because again, I think you know, yeah, New England they were a little more tactical, and of course maybe that's partly them you know influencing him. Um, but I do think. You know, for lack of a better way to say it, Arians and Leftwich kind of took the shackles off him a little bit to where, like, hey, yeah. you know, if you make a mistake, so what? Right. We're okay. We just came from Jameis right. Winston. We're used <laughs> to mistakes. Right. Like, we want some plays. We didn't get you here to throw four-yard dink and dunk passes to Mike right. Evans and Chris Godwin. Right. I mean, they're awesome. We want to throw 45-yard passes to Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Yeah. And he bought into that, and he's changed that way. Right. And, you know, you made all the points there. You know, his end-of-the-game clutch – ability is still maybe as good as anybody still in the great. sport yeah you know so that's amazing i use the phrase a lot you know you heard me say he goes down swinging now he can do more with more that's the one thing i'll yep. come in with brady but and to why he's number eight and maybe not number three or four that's my next why okay why yeah why let's go he there right well why because he, he can't do less more with less mm. that would be my i would argue that the guys that we have here in front of them you could put them on lesser teams and again we're all on the same team here for the sake of chris sims top 40 yeah where i'd go you know when we play those some of those games where we're a little overmatched or don't you know our scheme isn't as good and we're not protect those guys are going to be able to still make it happen a little bit more than Tom Brady mm. and as you saw in some of the games and I've made this point where they lose this year or the year before it it really comes down to one thing with him his only flaw yep. is pressure around him people around him yeah you know you hear me say this thing size is a skill mm -hmm. when he's comfortable and gotten in a rhythm and been protected early, he will stand there and take some shots and throw the ball over the line. And the size is a skill. He can make plays, again, like that Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray where they're in the pocket and people are around them. Brady can still make unbelievable throws down the field where I'd go, those guys can't do that to his capacity because they just don't have the size, the levers, the hand he does, all of that. So he's really good. But – the issue now compared to maybe some of these other guys we're going to talk about and stuff is when when it starts hairy from yeah. the start of the game, New Orleans both times this year, the Rams game and the playoff game, it's, it's hairy for a while. Mm -hmm. And he might never settle in. And he yeah. might never really make a good throw. And then it starts to make his decisions bad too. And I know all quarterbacks are going to be affected by pressure. But I'm telling you the guys that are in front of him yeah. are less affected and can still do more in some of those situations than Brady. Right. And that's why I think he's eight and there's seven ahead of him. I think to accentuate that, yeah. and I, I, I noticed the same thing. I'm sitting here nodding my head. Uh, to make it make uh, – make it even clearer yeah when it does get bad it happens so quickly it does and so, it's abrupt and he's jumpy yes, and he goes from okay the, the the conviction i talked about yeah and the talent wash rinse repeat 18 right. yard out route 10 yeah. yard in route just it just keeps coming and he kills you exactly but the 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 moment it starts to collapse in the pocket a yeah. little bit he goes from best quarterback i've ever seen yeah. to this offense isn't going to score again today. Uh, it exactly. happens like that. It happens like that. It happens like it that. It happens like that because it's all of a sudden it's, you know, you go, go pay people go back, watch the Washington, watch the New Orleans games, watch the, and it goes into, you know, let me get the ball out of my hand quickly. And it's just like, well, wait, I know you were pressured the two plays before that, but there was no pressure there. You didn't need to throw the ball in the Watch flat the there. Philadelphia game where or, they killed him. He was terrific most of the game. They had the stretch of three or four series, and I know Worfs was hurt. Yeah. The pocket was caving in on him. But it is a split second where it's like this dude's in control. They might score 80 points. To That's it. Yeah. They're done. I, that's, that's to me a little bit of the, the, the only issue he has on his game and right now. And he comes now. out of it. He comes out of it, I know. But but uh, those pockets of time show up. They show up. And, you know, I, there was a part here where I thought about making him nine and press, Prescott eight mm. because m one of my things was is like – like Prescott on the Buccaneers versus the Rams in that game. If he was on the like, there's they don't go down twenty-seven to three. Mm -hmm. They're, they don't. He's not going to be as flustered early on by the pressure. He's going to make a few plays within that pressure and settle the team down. 
So that's where, but but ultimately, I thought, man, Brady's just more consistently better in every other area to where I put him ahead of him. But yes, I think that is the thing that you worry about. And then you know what? What people lose translation. Yeah, I know. Hey, he's under pressure, and I know it's never easy. But like I talk about, it affects his decision making. It affects his accuracy. Of course, he can't make plays outside the pocket, right. so he can't get out of trouble there. Right. I gotta dock him points for that. I mean, the guys we're gonna talk about here in a minute all can do those things. I'm I'm sorry. So that's who, and then the, I think the other thing that can be a little annoying or the negative with, with this conversation with him is that, yes, even with that same thing, okay, it's been pressure, boom, all right, you stepped up, you moved in the right, po- the right spot in the pocket, hey, there's Evans going across the middle of the field for a 20-yard gain, you know, hang in there and throw it, but he's already moved on to the short throw, even though he's bought himself time with the po- you know, in yeah. the pocket and made the right move. He doesn't give it a chance now to go, wait, let me look back downfield. I got it again. Yeah. And that's not all the time. You know, against some of the middle class and lower teams, he does what I'm talking about. It's just these games where, hey, the defense is a little more ferocious right. and it gets a little scary and hairy for a second. Think about, about the Packers NFC Championship game, you know, the year before that. We had a few moments of that as well. And of course, the Saints games that year as well. They're all the same thing. And it's, hey, it's hard. I don't know if he's going to correct this right now at his age. He's in a little bit of a preservation mode and he's 45 years old. Nobody wants to get hit. I'm 42 and I don't want to get, I'm 41. <laughs> I don't want to get hit, let alone what I'm going to feel like when I'm 45. A couple of things to think about here. Yeah. As we, uh, b- before we move on from Tom, things he's without. Okay, yeah. so Bruce Arians not on the sideline anymore. Right. He moves upstairs. O.J. Howard is gone. Antonio Brown is gone. Yeah. Both of his guards are gone. Right. Uh, you could argue, eh, none of those are that big a deal. But, I mean, as a group, it could affect him. Definitely. What do you think? Definitely. I mean, Shaq Mason, they traded for him. They need him to play well. Uh, I do think Gronk will be back. Yeah. I think that's inevitable. I didn't bring it up because I, I just figured yeah. at some point he'll I think be back. it's going to happen, too. I mean, I do. You know, Godwin, yeah, he's not going to be healthy right away to start the year. Um, but still, I think there's, this is still one of the best teams in football, period. You know, you know the offensive line is still big and overpowering in a lot of ways. Yeah, the other guard position, they got to figure that out a little bit. But, you know, with Evans, Russell Gage was a really quiet, awesome signing right. by them yeah. in free agency. You know, will they maybe be as explosive in the past game to start the year? Probably not. You know, they need Godwin to get back and get going there. But I still think this is going to be a dangerous offense. And come on. Their defense, their defense is, is, is the real deal. Yeah. It's loaded. I mean, there's there's not a position on their defense where you don't look at and go, that's towards the top of football. You can't talk yourself into thinking they would be anything but like near the top or at the top in January when it all starts. Uh, that, exactly right. They'll be there in the I, I would be shocked. There's the, one of the most complete, well-built football teams in the game, and Brady is still playing awesome football. So I would expect them, yes, to be right there when it's all said and done. There it is. Flamethrower. There it is. Out of the shoot. Boom. Tom Brady at eight. Brady, the GOAT. All right. From Brady at eight, we move on to another Super Bowl champion at seven. Yep, number seven, Russell Wilson, new quarterback of the Denver Broncos. Still got to get used to that. I know, right? Yeah. Let Russ cook. That's right. Go Broncos. <laughs> All right, here we go. So Also down from a year ago? Also down from a year ago. Yep. Yep, there's no doubt. Last year he was five, right? I think the year before that I had him a number two. Yeah. All right, so he's he's definitely fallen a little bit here. But, again, we got some young, really good quarterbacks in the league right now. All right, the, I mean, banner statement, still one of the best big play QBs in the NFL. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I mean, when you'd watch Russell Wilson and break him down, he's not under, necessarily always a quarterback-friendly offense. They do, he doesn't get a whole lot of slam dunk, easy completions and throws. They don't throw screens and that. And as you start to sit there and watch it, you start to go, damn. I mean, oh, gosh. I mean, this game, all they did is ask him to throw 30-yard post, 30-yard crosser, 40-yard bomb down the sideline, 50-yard post down the middle. And he's phenomenal at all of that stuff. That's, I mean, he's great. And, of course, still has playmaking ability to scramble and run and do that. Has that dropped off a little bit? Yes, it has. But it's still really damn good. All right? So from all that. And then he has an effect on the team like we talk about with all these guys. He gives your team great leadership. Every team thinks they can win when they have Russell Wilson, a quarterback. Mm-hmm. You're hearing all that stuff from the Broncos already. Right. Decision-making and, like, that, that part of it, it's pretty good. It's not perfect for, I think, Russell Wilson's probably part of the reason he's number seven a little bit is, mm, hey, Pete, I know you got this graphic ready. Let's go there, you know, a little bit. You know, uh, one thing that I always come back to with Russell Wilson, I think I've said this in years past, and it, it holds true, uh, it, is 
can be too conservative. Definitely too conservative throwing the ball between the hashes mm-hmm. and in the middle of the football field. When you watch them, you, you go, man, they throw a lot of balls outside the number. And you go, hey, great, he's got a great arm. We know he can do that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right? But I also think there's a little bit of a concerted effort where they go, let's make the plays out here because Russell's a little reluctant to let, let it cut it loose in the middle of the football field. And to me, that is part of Russell's issue as a player and it affects their offense, I think, to a degree here as well. Do you think that'll change in Denver? I, I, it has to, to me. Just to, they got to get and, – and I think Hackett – his offensive scheme is better and will find more ways to get him easy completions over the middle of the field than maybe anybody Russell's been with. So I do expect that. Right. I mean, Nate Hackett's going to see this and go, wait, of course. we can't let people just like not defend the middle of the field. Right. Like that's just insane. You're, there's some of the biggest plays in football happen right in that area that are neglected by Russell Wilson. Right. So that's where he's got to get better at. And, you know, off of that, you know, like I said, doesn't see the field that well. Reluctant at times to pull the trigger in that in those windows. And to me, what causes them at times to fall behind in games or have certain little lulls where I go, hey, some of these guys in front of you would have pulled the trigger and made that throw right there. Right. And and to me, that's something I need to see improve a little bit from Russell Wilson for sure. So as we kind of look at the group of this, since you and I have been doing this in yeah. uh, the last four years, I believe. So he's been – Two and three and five. This is pretty easily his lowest ranking. Yeah, right. So thinking about him last year, Chris, I mean, his um, his team, uh, his relationships within the team, his desire to be there in Seattle all slipped. Yes. If you want to say they slipped a little, they slipped a lot, they slipped. Yeah. How can you glean or how did you glean if, if his play – just strictly as a quarterback, dipped as well or eroded, or was it just those other things affecting? Yeah, him? no, I, I it's, tough one. I it know is. it's a really no, tough question. It, I mean, it, it is. It's it's that is the it's the hardest thing about this exercise a little bit is sometimes of like wait oh wait do I blame this on the player right. or this with the everything team? going on there? Right, last year. there's a lot of things going on here. And yeah, I mean, hey, the injury, mm-hmm. you know, them the early part of the year not running the ball all that well. They didn't pass protect all that well. All of that as well. I mean, yes, did that affect him? Sure, there's no doubt about it. But when I go back and still watch games like uh, Minnesota early on, um, you know, the 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 Cardinals, the Washington football game, the Rams later on in the year, there's. One, he lost control of the football more than he has in years past. Mm. That's what I will say. Where in every one of those games, there was a few throws where I went, like the Vikings game. There was a throw. I think it was DK, or it might have. I think it was DK. He had DK on like a. It's a. It's a third and four and a big part of the game, and DK Metcalf's wide open over the middle, and he kind of airmails it, and DK can't catch the ball, and you just go, boy, I mean, damn, that that was. That was the game right there. Yeah. I mean, we needed that for you guys to get back in this and make it a one score. There was some of that that went on this year where he lost control of the ball. And this is before he hurt the in- had the finger I'm injury. I going to bring that up. I know. Yeah. It, it, it happened even more after the injury. But that, to me, was something that jumped out. And then, again, I think what happens, too, is like I talked about. Again, it, it, the league does not lend itself to being conservative anymore. It just – you know, I don't give a shit if you threw single digit interceptions on the guy that threw the guy that won the Super Bowl threw the second most interceptions in the sport mm-hmm. this year. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew Stafford. That's right. So that's where like, you know, it, it's it's there's too many plays going back to let's say the Rams second game. Okay, because I wrote down some more specific plays and notes here just to be a little more where there's some plays early on. It's a third down. He's got DK on a deep curl. Right, it's a little tight. The guy's behind DK on the curl, but it's like, I, I know it's tight. You gotta fucking throw it. You can't. You can't like, oh no, I'm not gonna throw the ball on third and eight, and then take a sack and just go, oh, like no, that that to me is where the guys above him make the play. Or it's you know, it's oh, we're only down seven nothing, or it's seven seven, and I got the go route and the deep crosser and a guy in the flat, and I look at the go route and he's not there, and there's the guy in the deep crosser, and he's open, but he's not wide open, so we don't throw it. 
Okay, well, two plays later, you didn't get the first down and you punted. But you should have been 25 yards up yeah. with a first down and the field position would have been changed. So, again, those are the things that statistics aren't going to tell you about, and that's why I'm here to tell you about them and, and differentiate a little bit. Still awesome. Uh, looks for the one-on-one -on -one play a little too much. Mm. Avoids the schematical play, I think, a little too much. And I think it goes back into, I don't know if I could see down the middle of the field. I don't trust it. I'm going to be conservative. I can see DK one-on-one -on -one, so right. let me just throw that a little bit of that as well uh but i think that's you know kind of hits it all as far as uh i'm concerned on, on russell wilson he's he's the one guy though I mean, he's the only guy on your list today yeah uh, and it's rare that this high up in the list he's on a new team we've talked yes. about it a little bit right. so as soon as his name comes up that kind of like that the one is his ability i think the one a not, not the two the one a is where he belongs now in the afc west yeah oh, i watched I them know. play last year and thought man if, if they had decent quarterback play they're a, they're a playoff team. Yes. Second best scoring defense in the league. Yep. I think they were one of 10 teams, though, to average less than 20 points. Right. So, I mean, clearly they need this. Yes. They could be a touchdown better on average than they were last year and still be behind Kansas City. Maybe. And L.A. I know. This is the only division where four of the all, all four of the quarterbacks, I think, are in the top 11. I mean, yep. Derek Carr was, was uh, 11. 11. Yeah. All the other guys are still to come. Yeah. So, long way of saying, where do you think they belong in the AFC West? Yeah. I, I mean... I do think just complete roster wise, you know, Kansas City, them and, and the Chargers are a notch above the Raiders, I would say, just from the total roster. And the But would you put them in the top half? As the AFC overall? No, in the AFC, AFC West. West. The I AFC know. West. That's where I'm I mean, it is I'd probably give the Chargers the advantage right now. I'd probably go Chiefs, Chargers, right. Broncos. I think you, I, it's close. It's real close, but you, you would have to really dig in. And say, okay, I know I'm going against the grain here a little bit. Yeah. But I think they're in the top half because of this. I'm like, are, are you ready to do that? Yeah. No, I'm not ready to do that yet. Now, I, there's things where I go, ooh, I, they, you know, hey, I like this. And sure. they could be there. And they, you know, but it, it's, a, it's a new defense. It's a totally new offensive scheme. You know, none of that's changed with the Chargers. Right. You know, and they've got added some players. And, yeah. and, of course, I know you know Denver added some players too. But, yeah, I'll give the Chargers the slight edge. But, damn, I mean, it's it's four good teams. Those three especially, I think, are really good. And like you said, the Broncos, you know, yeah, uh, Vic Fangio playing a defensive style of football and all that, I think held back their offense a little bit. You had, you know, and not quarterbacks that weren't capable or trustworthy enough to just let things go that way. And that held them back. I think we're going to see a totally new – attack here by them he's no arm angles yeah. gotta jam the ball in there a little bit more yeah that's the one thing we got to see a little bit more from russell wilson to me everything else is pretty phenomenal i right. mean again he's he's awesome big time playmaker still can scramble and make plays has a big time arm and still can really throw the deep ball about as good as anybody in the sport You've answered my question with Russell, both individual and team-wise. Okay. Uh, is, is there anything I Denver think, or Russ-related? I think um, I think that was it. I think we – You want to state here before we move on to the next couple guys? Yeah, well, no, I think we're good. I mean, unless, you know, Pete, you good? I think I said all I needed to say here. I think we can go on to the next guy. I think you have touched all the bases yep. with Russell Wilson. Right. Okay, big ticket items. Eight oh, was Tom baby. Brady. Seven was Russell Wilson. Bigger ticket item. I think. Coming That's up next. right. Oh, I mean, yeah. For the here and now. Oh, this is, to me, one of my favorites of the, this, this whole process. Yeah. Because I've been telling everybody that this guy is here for the last this six years. This is a victory years. lap. It's this a, victory a victory lap. lap. I'm going to yeah. pat myself on the back and tell myself I'm awesome. <laughs> hey, Chris Sims, you're awesome. All right? Um, yeah, that's right. Matthew Stafford time at number six. All right. And I thought he'd be higher. I, I thought about making him top five. I did. Yeah. And, you know, we'll talk about number five after this. And yeah, I'll tell I, you, I know, it was yeah. a little closer than you think, actually. I think people yeah. will be surprised. Yeah. Stafford. I mean, here here's the Saf Stafford, Super Bowl champion Matthew Stafford, the guy who's always been a Super Bowl quarterback that finally got a team that matched up with his Super Bowl capabilities. And guess what he did in year one? That's right. He won a freaking Super Bowl. You know, with all the new learning and offense, moving parts, players hurt, blah, 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 didn't matter. Did he go through a rough, rough patch? Certainly. And we'll hit on that. But damn, still one of the greatest arms in the game, period. I mean, one of the greatest. And, 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 and if you wonder why Cooper Cup had a 
career year. Just look at Matthew Stafford. That's all you need to know. Why? Well, Stafford allowed that offense to do things that they've never done before with other quarterbacks and allowed them to call plays they've never called before. Cooper Cup probably caught 20, 30 balls where he goes, well, the last quarterback I had wouldn't even thrown that ball in there, but this f***ing guy threw it right. and stuck it in my face mask. I mean, so so that's why. If you want to know why Cooper Cup had a career year, it's because of the quarterback. And then McVay and him being able to unleash his total playbook because of Matthew Stafford. Incredible arm. I mean, he's amazing in the quick game, short passes. You talk about getting it out quick, getting it out with crazy sidearm deliveries. His sidearm yeah. deliveries and all that are are up there with with Mahomes and Burrow, I mean uh, Mahomes and Josh Allen, who to me are the best of the sport at doing that stuff. Incredible accuracy on high level throws. That's the thing that jumps so off when true. you go watch back. Yeah. You just go on the money, forty yard post. Mm-hmm. On the money, back foot, sidearm, thirty yard in cut. How about what? the one in Tampa that won the game? For right him? Off, off your back, back foot, foot, fifty, 50 yards. yards down the field. I don't people even think in your he, face. So he just got back to the back of his drop. He didn't really even step up. He was fading back. Yes, and just flicked it. And just flicked it's phenomenal. it. Phenomenal. Right. Yeah. So to me, that's it's it's a very special talent he has. A, a special one to where I'd go. The two guys that we just talked about before this, you know, Brady, Russell Wilson, they can't do that like he can. They can't. They can't throw sidearm and still throw it 40 yards down the field or no-look sidearm or, like you said, fall back and just flick a ball yeah. 55 yards. That's where he's really special. He's tough as hell. Yeah. Gosh, he will stand in the pocket. That's the one thing when you go back and watch, you go, holy crap, he got hit a lot last year. Holy crap, he was under pressure more than I thought watching back the year, and he still makes a ton of big throws. He is not affected by it. Go back and watch the Super Bowl. He's getting f***ing lambasted with you know guys hurt, and he's still in there throwing the ball in the tight windows down the middle of the field and and you talked about it after the game how great he played with the pocket collapsing and how many tight throws yeah yes i mean his ability to handle mental and physical pressure i think is top notch yeah i do and And he had a lot on him this year yeah keep in mind in the super bowl i mean he had those two interceptions i mean there was halftime in between but we talked about this right after he had like over an hour of real time where all he did was throw picks and sit and wait and wonder what was coming next because of the halftime. Yes. And he came back and played really, played awesome. really well. And I think of that word response with him. So yeah. he responded in the Super Bowl. Remember at the end of the season, I mean, the last four games, he had eight picks. I mean, it was like that everything was – That was my was, question. We were going, going the Rams going well. were the really like, good. I just questioned the quarterback. About two or three weeks week, weeks into it, you had to say, okay, is, is Stafford going to hold him back in January? Yeah. It, that, that's how it looks now at the end of December. And then his – I think he was 70% in the playoffs. Yep. The team was around 50% third down which is phenomenal that time of year no doubt his rating was down. higher than it was at any point of his career right he was nothing short of fantastic when it mattered most no doubt he was the question going down the stretch i mean he, again right i mean you, you you know as much as he was still making plays and doing things you know you got to go back to the time and go wait that seahawks game the vikings game the ravens game Look down the stretch yeah he may, they won all three of those, but people, you got to remember, he made some really stupid gunslinger, right. reckless plays that made those games a lot closer than they should have been. Uh, and that's that's the big thing. The 49ers game at the end of the year, I think, yeah. is where it started to go, wait, okay, wait, I don't need to always have to make magic here. Yeah. And he played good in that game. He led him on a late clutch drive yeah. to tie the game, even though they ended up losing. But I think that was the jump off spot. Yeah. And I think a little bit like we saw with Brady the year before, hey, it's a new team. It's a new system. It it takes about probably till December to where you start to feel comfortable and like it's riding a bike and all of that. Right. So, hey, that's the one thing that why he's six is hey, he's not always in the trust trade. There's still a little bit of that gunslinger in him. Mm-hmm. And I think a little bit of that, it can be coached out of him. And I think we saw that to your point in the playoffs. Yeah. And I, cause I think one, I think one of those things too, like we talk about Brady in the new England way, right? Well, here's a guy that was kind of in the opposite. He, if he wasn't a gunslinger and didn't make some shit happen in Detroit, they never had a chance to win right, the game. Right. So he was used to playing that loose style of football. We where talked like, about that before he went there. Exactly. Like yeah. He's used to, if I don't play by the edge, we don't win in Detroit. 
Right. And that's where I think as the season went on, he finally learned like, hey, I don't need to try to throw the ball as they're spinning me around in my own end zone, try to throw it out of the end zone and throw a pick six to the Titans. Right. Or jam a six-yard completion on the sidelines here and just throw it as hard as I can because I think I can fit it in. You don't need to do that when you're on the Rams and that team. So I think he learned that, but that's still probably the thing yeah. you look at to go, hey, we can't just – drop back and the coach called the post route and just say, I'm right. going to f***ing throw it because I want to throw a post route. Yeah. That's, I think, why he's six and, and maybe not higher. I thought one of the, the, the cool, nerdy quarterback things about what Matthew Stafford did in the Super Bowl was that we think about the fact that he was reckless and he was crazy talented and all the cool throws he could make. Yeah. It was decision-making and patience and accuracy. And precision Most throws. Of the time. It Most was. of the time. Like, it was. He threw that great touchdown early to OBJ, but – that was the first pass I think he threw over 10 or 12 yards. Yeah, right. And right. then he came back to – I don't want to say Dinkin and Duncan because it wasn't just it was taking these like way out. It was a lot like 10 and 12s right over like the middle. It was like decision-making and, right. and patience. Yes, it was. And, like, those are two things you didn't always associate with Matthew Stafford, and now you have to attach it to him in the biggest game he ever played. No doubt. No doubt. And I think he did that throughout the playoffs. You just talk about the pressure situations, whether it's the Bucks. Yeah. He played awesome the whole game. The team kind of failed him – down the stretch and let right. the Bucks back in it. And then they were like, hey, Stafford, you got to bail us out. Can but he you was awesome it? from the first drive. He was from the drive. He was awesome that whole game. Yeah. He never, never let up. Right. 49ers game, he was also good in that game. He wasn't great, but again, huge clutch drive. I mean, they were down by what, 10 in the fourth quarter against the 49ers in the NFC Championship game and still and won. And then, of course, down like you're talking about in the Super Bowl to yeah. the Bengals and right. come back and win with injuries. No Odell, tight ends out. You know, I think offensive linemen got hurt. So yeah. they had their issues there. Uh, and to your point, mm -hmm. and this is the last thing I want to say as far as about, he's in, like, unlike Russell, he's incredible in the middle of the field mm. with some of the throws. Yeah. And his ability not only to just move in the pocket and do that, but to put the ball in some unbelievable tight windows, to your point again, I mean, hey, go back and watch the Super Bowl. It says, I mean, how, you know, how many throws did he jam in between a receiver and a sa or a linebacker and a safety to Cooper Cup over the middle or whatever? And then what you realize when you watch it too is he is a f master at looking people off. Yeah. He, I'm going to look at you, short receiver, short receiver, short receiver, and as he's looking at them and winding up, yeah. he's throwing to a guy that's behind him by 10 or 15 yards and hits it in stride. Right. He really probably throws more no-look passes than anybody in the sport. Yeah, the one of the Super Bowl on the, on the game when he drives. Exactly right. He had that one right yeah. there. He's looking at there's an over-under concept yeah. where there's a guy like running a five-yard option route underneath, and he's got Cooper Cut running the 12 to 15-yard cut in right. cut in behind it, and he gets the safety, yeah. Von on Bell to take the cheese because he stares down that shorter guy so much right. and starts his wind up still staring at him and throws the no look and again that's special it doesn't yeah. go in the stat book and we don't know it but those are the little things that to me differentiate the top 10 and stuff at that time right. at times he had a really savvy version of that too with again I come back to that touchdown to OBJ early in the Super Bowl he glanced at the safety just long enough from the moment he had the ball right before he he knew he was going to OBJ the whole time yes but he had that half a second where just he looked there just to keep there, him there for a second ju just to keep it yes he's great just to that. open him up a little bit more no doubt um, I also want to point out he was number one against the blitz last year you mentioned his toughness I think Pete showed the stat that he was uh, he had no interceptions in the fourth quarter he's also number one against the blitz so it's one thing to, to picture him being tough in the pocket yeah he was the mental toughness no picks in the fourth quarter, number one against the Blitz. I mean, you can't make that up. I, I know. And that's why I, I made that little statement about his mental and physical there toughness. It's yeah. a real thing. Yep. And it was definitely part of the reason where I just went, well, yeah, I'm, I'm – you know, to me, that's one of those things that separated him from Brady. Yeah, and that in that department right there, for sure. I mean, it's it's real. And hey, you know, you see there again the support system. Yes, it helps with the stats, and then you get a coach who. You know, McVay, the good offensive coordinators in football, uh, the the really good ones, they never let teams win on the blitz. They, they're they're off. That's why they're great. Oh, you're you're gonna do this to someone. We're gonna blitz you back. Thank we you. got it. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So he was he was with an offensive coordinator who has all these answers and tricks and things to screw over a defense when they want to be over aggressive. So there you go. I mean, 13 touchdowns, one interception Man. against the blitz, 8.9 yards per pass attempt. I mean, those are 
big numbers. And then, of course, How a passer per? rating. 13, uh, 8.9 yards per pass attempt on these. Yeah. Really good. I mean, so yeah. it's not dink and dunk and screen to the receiver and all that crap right. either. Uh, yeah, Matthew Stafford, good for him. Glad he's number six. Glad he won a Super Bowl. And glad he silenced some of the haters of the world that were on his case for a long time. One last thing. They always give a tough schedule to Super yeah. Bowl winner. Yeah. Take a peek at his uh, at the oh, Rams yeah. schedule coming up here. Yeah. Is, is there a way for, for him to move up? Or you, you, even I do. higher than six? I, do, I, 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 don't, I don't think. Yes, he can move up. He can move up. He's still got too much big-time talent to – for me to just go, no, this is about where it is. Now, listen, the guys he's got in front of him are, are the real deal. Yeah. But he, he can move up a little bit. There's okay. no doubt. You know, again, I think he has a year where he makes all these plays like he did last year and then cleans up some of the mistakes. Yeah. Shit. I mean, it'd be hard not to move him up. But there's, you know, if you're listening, hey, the Bills game, we will be there. That's the kickoff game this year. That is going to be awesome back in L.A. But then they got Falcons at home. They got at the Cardinals, at the 49ers, Cowboys, and Panthers. I don't know. That's tough. It's it's not the toughest I've seen. It's not, yeah. It's not killer, but hey, at you know, their division at Cardinals, at 49ers, those are gonna be big, big matchups. And hey, the Cowboys and Panthers, I you know, the Cowboys are good, we know that, and the Panthers have got some talent. But the Rams you know, the Rams, the Bucks, the 49ers, I, I just would be shocked if they're yeah. not their teams are too well orchestrated. They're too complete. The only thing I'll say about the Rams that, you know, I say every year is just they're top heavy. If you know, few injuries can really affect them. I think more than it can affect maybe the 49ers or Bucks mm. or some of the other top teams in football because we know you know f them picks and the Rams getting all the big right. time trades and uh, everything else like that. Nothing but Super Bowl winners and MVPs here today. So we have Brady Wilson to Stafford bringing us to number five. A name uh, many may have expected to be even even higher, but still, top five, pretty good. I, uh, I didn't go into this exercise thinking he would be five. Yeah. I can tell you that. Aaron Rodgers, that's right, my man, right, my favorite quarterback of all time. Oh, Aaron Rodgers. He's holding up two plus two equals four. I mean, yep, it's plus yep. one. Plus one more yeah. is five. Yes, that's right. That's where Aaron Rodgers is coming in. I mean, again, I mean, again, this is it's at his age to be top five. First off, I just would like to tell everybody it's it's pretty amazing, and the fact that he's won two MVPs, it's absolutely amazing. It's still one what? of the. It's, oh, I'll get there. Hold on. Let me let me wax <laughs> poetically about him first. It's still one of the best arms in the game. It's still one of the quickest releases in the game. He's still an incredible decision maker, manages the game probably as good as anybody in football, and I think that's where he doesn't get like enough credit for it. He's a real game manager, and sometimes I well I, I'm going to hit you here. I think that's why he's number five a little bit to a degree. Uh, you know, still can push the ball down the field, moves well in the pocket. Still doesn't make as many plays running anymore. That's not what he is anymore. But can still bounce around, buy himself some time, and throw lasers all over the football field. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is still an incredibly awesome talent, and still one of the best quarterbacks in football. And listen. It hurts my heart that he's number number five. Mm. It really does. You got to uh, go off what you see. I, I, so, I, I do. I got to go with what I see here. Now, if this ranking would have come out just after the regular season, yeah, without the playoffs, right? Where would he have been? I don't think. I don't think it would be different. Really, I don't. Because I mean, because I, I said all season. Yeah. And I don't think you pushed back and said no mm -hmm. that he was the MVP. Yeah. No, I did, I did not. I did not push back. So, You're right. I so thought that, he was the MVP. So but I would have bet one, two, or three. Yeah, I get you. I understand. You know, and again, just because you played the best football consistently over eight weeks doesn't mean you're the better player when it all comes down to it. I think that's what I would come back to. And I don't let the end of the year, you know, affect this. I didn't look at the last game and just go, well, because of that game, I don't. I think that game, again – just brought out some of the issues with them and him all together a little bit to okay. where we saw it on national stage. It's the only game on, yeah. and we really get to focus and digest it and look at it. You've got but the I would, issues there, right? Well, yes, of yeah. course I do. And But what I would tell you mm -hmm. is, like, you saw those issues in other games. It's just they squeaked by with a win, and yeah. you, didn't, you didn't care. You went, ah, oh, they won. But I would go, you know, that Browns game at the end of the year yeah. where Baker threw like 74 interceptions and yeah. it still had the ball left to score the game at the end, to win the game at the end? Yeah. That, th this is, it's that. Their it, margin for error, their, their, their formula for winning wasn't like, their record was impressive. Aaron had pockets where he was fantastic. But right. They would win close games all the time. There wasn't much room for, for missing. It wasn't much room for missing. 
He, you know, is great at executing. It's one of the reasons I think, you know, you and me, and you heard me say this a lot during the year, I go, can you really get to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl by just that way. out executing and not making mistakes? The San Francisco game answered that question. Exactly. And that's why he's five. You know, and again, like I was making the point there with like the Ravens game, the Browns game. You know, there's a few other games where I go, to your point, the margin of error, but the margin of error shouldn't have been that close. It shouldn't have been. It, it was that close because we got conservative and we take the foot off the gas and we go, well, I'm not going to make a mistake here to lose the game or anything. And that, to me, you know, lent itself to some closer games and is the reason they lose a playoff game the way they do. You know, and I wish we could talk about the other four guys in front of him here right. because I go, the other four guys just don't, they wouldn't go down like that. They wouldn't. They oh oh you we're say up, like that like, like conservative like we're up yeah we're up by two touchdowns and we're gonna f- make a play and be up by three touchdowns here on the eight yard line we're not gonna like throw the ball quick in the flat and throw the ball quick in the flat and then not find anybody open and throw the ball away and kick the field goal and instead of being up by four twenty one we're up by seventeen is that what you just explained right there when you said a little too much of a game manager yes sometimes? yes a hundred percent that was it in that a hundred percent there's too many plays in those parts of the game too where I just go you're Aaron Rodgers you got to hit that you got to throw it you got to throw it you can't just go I'm going to check it down that's like you're too good you can hit the bullseye all the time and to me that's what happened in the 49er game and that is where you know I and and you have to go back and look to start to see it because again you they win so many of these games and the stats are good so you start to go oh well okay they won who cares blah 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 but then as I got later in the year and I started to get into the throws in that game you start to see it and then the 49er game, yeah, well, they finally played a, you know, a full, complete team there at the end of the year. But there was too many plays in that game where, you know, again, the pocket's good. But I don't know. We just had a sense it's the 49ers and their pass rush is good. So let me just throw it to the, to the back, at, you know, run the flare out of the backfield. But wait, the tight end's open over the middle. Like, throw it. You have yeah. time. Do it. You know, to me, there was too many plays and moments and yards left on the field at, at certain parts, even during the year, even though they still won, where I just go, you're too good to not take advantage of that right there. And to your point, again, well, I think we can talk about this here a little bit. Like, hey, we know the four quarterbacks that are missing on my list right now. All right. All right. There's four quarterbacks missing. All right, yes, it's Herbert, it's Mahomes, it's Allen, it's Burrow. Not in that order. Okay, you're gonna that's not the order. Well done there. But <laughs> it's gonna be those four guys don't go down like that against the 49ers. They don't. I'm just sorry. They're more aggressive throughout the game. They don't let the game end up in, whoa, if you block a punt, all of a sudden we could lose right. this. Yeah. And they're gonna make a few plays, hold the ball, scramble force a ball down the field a little bit into a tight window because they're going to go, I'm the f***ing man. I need to jumpstart us. I need to make sure right. we win the game right here. Right. And to me, that's where Rodgers has fallen a little bit compared to the group that's going to be in front of him. To me, it's kind of similar in the explanation and analysis. I asked about Kyler Murray dropping. And to yeah. me, you can't ignore that the performance wasn't great in the postseason. But right. With both these guys, you have said, you know what? It's it's that's not just the timing of it. It's these issues were around they at were the end there. of the season. They were I know. around. I know. There was a giant light shined on at the end of the year. Yes. But as much as I thought Aaron should have been the MVP in the regular season, right. like I turned off the TV that night thinking, okay, the Green Bay defense doesn't dominate the San Francisco offense like that and expect to be anywhere near losing. Yeah. And that, that no. to me that that has to matter a lot in the in something like this. Well, it's it's like they they could have they should have still won that game to oh, your point yeah. and what you're talking about. Yeah. But again, what I'm trying to tell everybody here is the conservative nature in which he played let them hang around and it shouldn't have been to that point. Do you think it'll improve without Devontae Adams? <laughs> without Hackett. Not to say that I mean that that those are the two reasons why, but there are two big pieces of that puzzle that are gone. There, now. There's part of me that like wants to say it might change just because it might have to, to where you he might he might have to with this group he might have to go. I I, I got to throw the laser a little bit more here, or I got to push the envelope a little bit more because we're just not going to be as surgical, and I'm not going to be able to depend on us, you know, always running the exact right route with the right play because I got younger guys here and they don't know the offense quite the same way. Right. To where it might lend him to having to physically do some things a little yeah. bit, you know, and push the push the bar that way. I think Rodgers without Adams affects his mentality in the pocket yeah. more than Mahomes without Hill. I do too. 
I definitely do. The other team might feel less threatened, Kansas City versus Green Bay. Yes, But right. I think the quarterback, I think the, the mindset changes even more for Aaron than, than Mahomes. I, I I don't disagree with that because I, I think, you know, Mahomes just drops back and how, here's the play and Andy told me to look here to look here. It's like it's, it's not even always about like, oh, Tyreek's the number one read or whatever that. Yeah, Adams was such a staple and, oh, wait, audible, let's get the ball to Adams. Oh, wait, they're running the blitz, run the screen to Adams. I mean, yeah. every answer ended up with Adams. And, you know, it, it's just funny. You know, I talked about Brady. Where, you know, I talked about he used to be a little bit too conservative. Now he's the gunslinger. It's like him and Rodgers reversed roles mm. a little bit. That's what it kind of came to me as I was writing notes today. Where Rodgers used to be that guy, you know. And now he's, it's almost like he's protecting his territory a little bit. But, yeah, again, Rodgers, awesome. We know that the f***ing man. I, I don't want anybody to think really anything less than that. But, yes, is his ability to make big plays, consistently make game-changing plays and all that up to the capabilities of some of the guys before uh, in front of him? No, it's not. Again, the year, and can he maybe feast and play at a higher level and you know have a better numbers and quarterback ratings consistently against the middle class and the poor of the NFL? Sure, he probably still can. But that's great. I'm not f***ing judging the top five guys on, oh, can he beat team number 27 in the NFL this day? No. I you get to this right ranking here. We're judging you the cream of the crop. And what are you doing in the biggest moments? That's really what you start right. to look at to differentiate things here. Right. And to me, that's where, again, the group in front of them, the Herberts, the Mahomes, the Allens, the Burrow, the, they, they almost will their teams back into games or putting a team away or you have no business doing this. And here you are in this game, and you got all these issues against you, and that's because of them and their magic. Rogers still amazing, but you know, again, I think maybe needs a little bit more support, and isn't quite the playmaker those guys are for sure. Pete just gave me news that's even bigger than Aaron Rodgers being number five. Is that right? Yeah. Whoa, bigger news, like legit bigger, news here. Yeah. This is the NFL. Deshaun Watson's suspension came down. No. No. Okay. No. All right. Hold on. Let me keep guessing. Okay. Is a player player oriented? You said a word in there that that, that is a hint. Big. Suspension, big. Yeah. It's a big person. Yeah. It's a big person. Big first name. Oh. It's a big first name. He's a free agent? Uh, technically. Yes. Technically, he's a free agent. He could sign with anybody. Like, he, he's not under contract with, with anybody football-wise. Any of the 32 teams could sign this person. Are you, tell, are you telling me Phil Sims is on the yes. line? <laughs> oh, damn. I thought there was bigger news than that. <laughs> I thought there was well, better news than that. I mean, jeez. <laughs> All right, listen. All right, hold on. Sign if you'd listen, like. Both of What's you. up, Dad? Both you there? You. I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, he's not there yet. Mm. Hello? Yeah. See, how dare you lie to me like that? <laughs> I, I will. No, we Hello? do not hear my father. Sorry, not yet. All right, all good. But uh, I think we, we hit it all with Rogers there, right? Yeah. I, with any of these guys, we could have spent an hour. Yes. But, I mean, I, I, I think you emptied the chamber. I, I, I hope so. There's still yeah. so much positive. You know, sometimes I think I may maybe sound a hair negative with these kind of things, too, just because I'm trying to make the point of why he's five. Well, he, here's the deal. Right. You like all these guys a lot. I, I do. know you like Aaron Rodgers a lot. I do. You could make an argument that anybody that we talked about today would could be in the top three. Yeah. Some of them you could make the argument one or two. Sure. So I'm sure there's a little bit of why you have to explain why they're not one, two, or three. Well, People are going to look at Rodgers and go, wait, the guy that won two MVPs fell down a few spots? And I'm going to go, yes, I am, yeah. Again, you know, it's where I think we talked about this a little at the end of the year where it just goes, just because you had the best year and played consistently the best does not mean you're the best player, not, at least not in my opinion. Hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't. And like I've, like I've said before, the four guys in front of him – they might have not played their A game as much as Rodgers did, who consistently played it for the most part of the year. But their A game, to me, is is better than his. And that, that to me, holds a little weight there. That, that's where I would say that, yes, they're capable 
of just making more happen. And even though they might not be quite as good at reading the defense and all that quite stuff, they're not that far behind to where I just give Rodgers and go, oh, he, he wins because he's that much better in that department. Right. You know, these are not – the guys we got in front of them, they're not idiots. They're smart people who make a lot of good decisions. And then let alone make some insane plays when the team has got issues and aren't – they go get it. You know, again, I think that's what you're seeing here a little bit with my 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 top five. And listen, I had like, you know, I had thoughts about even Stafford a little bit close to Rodgers and to a degree just because of that big game attitude that he has. Yeah. Rodgers lends to being a little tight and Stafford lends to being I'm going to go out there and f-ing make plays and throws all over the football field. Yeah. And yeah, I put a little value into that, as you could see. Could have had him flip flop there you could have, I, I, yeah. I, I mean I, I didn't really ever think about it I mean it crossed my mind it never got to like on some of these I wrote it in like question marks on the paper like mm-hmm. should I switch them I never got there but you know it it, it did cross my mind and yeah. I, again I think with Rodgers it goes back to really the last two years and you've seen some of the big games where it's just it's it's um it's it's just too tight to the to the vest a it's, little bit. It's been too much of a pattern. Like they're what's happened to the postseason. I guess better what hasn't happened to the postseason for them. I think so a little bit. I think be, it says it says, says something to it. Did we did we got Big Phil yet? Is he on there? Or are we still having technical difficulties? All right, all right. So we're gonna shift gears. We're still trying to figure out Big Phil. He's on the phone, but I think we got you know our crews in a new control room. Mm. So that's probably making some issues here. Um, all right, we've got some points bet stuff to talk about, Paul. We do have some points bet stuff. Uh, NFC champion, would you take the trio of Tampa Bay, Green Bay, LA Rams, or the field mm. as we check out the odds here? So Buccaneers most likely. Packers and Rams just behind them at 450. So I'll read that one more time. Would you bet on the trio of Bucks, Packers, Rams, like that group there, or would you bet on the field? Ooh. I think I'd take the trio. I I I I, I want to say the trio too. I, I, I'll, in all honesty, my my only like trepidation here with the trio is Green Bay. Mm. Uh, that's 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 the only one where I look at them a little bit. Because, one, I don't think Green Bay is better than San Francisco. I don't care if Trey Lance is the quarterback or not, as I I've told put, you. I yeah. Think, I, I think put by, Tampa Bay and L.A. together. Yeah, right. I think they're a little bit I have a hard time themselves. believing it wouldn't be those two. Right, I uh, for sure. The Rams part, I mean, the Green Bay part, uh, I got questions there. And, of course, yeah, we'd like to see how the 49ers quarterback situation works out. But as I've stated during the list here, I mean, the 49ers are one of those teams that – Yes, the quarterback play might not be as clean and as good in all areas, but the quarterback play could be much more dangerous and make them a more dangerous football team, which can make them a better offense. The 49ers are a really, really well-orchestrated team. You think they're the third best? I do. I think they're the third best. I'd, I would put like Bucks, Rams, and 49ers as the top three, and I'd have the Packers as four. That's how I would kind of look at it, at least in the NFC. Where would you have the Cowboys? The Cowboys... Because they're here at plus 800. I know, I know, and I, you know, I, I think they're a little too high on them. I, I do. I mean, if you, I would take the Eagles in the NFC East right now. Really? But that's who I'm going with. Really? I am. I'm going with that team. Your number across one the reason. Board. What's your hammer for thinking that well, Philly's better? I just think Philly, arguably, is the best offensive line in football. Top Defense, running team. Yep. Yeah, defensive lines up there. They got two like game changers at wide receiver. So I think Hertz will be better, right? Again, I mean, Hertz is what he is, but I think he can get a little bit better at his throwing, and they'll start to continue to formulate more and more around him and what he does and running the ball and all that. So, yeah, I look at the Eagles as being a real, real threat to the Cowboys. I do. I, I think they certainly can unseat them in the NFC East. Pete, I'm sorry, buddy. What would you say, pal? Okay. All right, we got a little promo. You know what time it is. Here I we do. go. If you're in an eligible state, PointsBet has a sign-up offer for unbut- unbuttoned listeners that you can't miss. Download the PointsBet app. Use code NBC2K to sign up and get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. So say you bet $100 on the Packers to win the NFC. If you win, you'll get 450 But if you lose, you will still get free bets worth $100. Come on, that's a win-win. Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with PointsBet. 
And one reminder, download the PointsBet app. Use the code NBC2K to sign up. You get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Booyah. And now, the free agent. We believe. We, we think. Is he there? Dad, you there? You got us? I think I am. Oh, Emma, my, can you, you hear me? I got, I got you. you. We got Phil. you. Way to go. Okay. Well, I just figured uh, I'm not going to get on NBC or anything that's going up there, new control room. Nobody wants to hear about the pain, okay? We don't <laughs> care. Of course, the baby. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's the other thing. And the FCC probably called in and said, let's take them off the air. There's too much cursing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a dad. No FCC on podcasts, so they can't well, do Well, okay. It. They All can't right. do yeah, it. They Sorry. Can, cursing. I mean, come on. Show your vocabulary, son, and use other words. Well, gosh, I don't know. You know, they, there's a, there's a, there was a study that came out of Harvard not long ago that said that people that curse are actually smarter. Yeah, you know, I actually read that, you yeah. know, and of course that's just another stupid thing said. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, listen, if it says that people that are smarter than curse, then you're Albert Einstein. I, well, you know, hey, mm. I, 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 you might be onto something. I might. Well, be no, Albert I think uh, the evidence we have out there tells us you're not. So let's just <laughs> oh, move darn on it. to that. Damn. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks a lot. So we just got yeah. done doing my quarterback rankings. You know, um, I just did Aaron Rodgers at five, which at you know, five. Yes, I heard a lot of it. I've been on hold here for forty minutes. So okay, I'm, good. I'm That's right. Get lot, on, but, Pete. Um, but yeah, yeah so, no, you know, but it's good. I think you you did it right. I, the first thing that comes to my mind, I liked your Stafford Rodgers talk. You know, Aaron Rodgers plays the game his way, and it's a great way, and he has great success. He's won MVPs, but it's um, what's the word? It, it's just smart. That's the first thing you got to say, and careful. Yeah. And you, you know, but the pro, and the, the only thing that's negative to that, Matt Stafford, is absolutely much more aggressive in his decision making. Yes. And tries to make more plays, and it backfires a lot on him yep. too. Right. right. But in big games, you know, a lot of times that's what you need too. Yeah. You got to push. You know, you just can't try to play the game perfect. Sometimes in big games. You got to look to be aggressive with, you know, with some, judging it right, right and right. making those throws. And I think this, the playoffs were a great example for, especially for Matt Stafford. Yes, you know, never backed off, made the right decisions. Yes, he had some turnovers, but damn, did he make a lot of big plays? Yes, yes. Look he at did. the final drive in the Super Bowl. Right. You know, we just it, there was four or five plays. I mean, they were tight and close. And he didn't blink. He was willing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He was willing to, as, as Parcells would say. He was willing to go say, down with a ship. Yeah. He's willing to go down in flames. You yeah. can't be afraid. Right. And, right. Um, you know, so that's that's what I saw from them. And, two, the last thing about uh, Matt Stafford, we talked about this. I don't know, Paul, if you and me and Christopher did or not. But, you know, I didn't think his arm was just off the charts this past year. And then, you know, a lot of it had to do – he got hurt in training camp. Was it his thumb or during the off season? He hurt his thumb. If I He had thumb. Heard. He had the tendonitis in the elbow. Well, yeah. That's why he probably got tendonitis exactly. in the elbow right. because of the thumb. He couldn't grip it. And, and I, I thought I saw a difference in him throwing, you know. Yeah. Especially uh, think about a couple of the long throws he threw deep down the field yeah. where they were five yards short. Right. Definitely and, had that. It was in the middle of the Yeah, part of the that, year that was there, when it little, jumped out to me. And no doubt. Just like Dak Prescott, when you fight little injuries, if it's to your feet, your ankles, to your you know hand, whatever else, then it most of the time is going to lead to some type of arm soreness or a little discomfort, and it's going to change you a little bit. No question. Yeah, no doubt. All right. All right, so good. I mean, uh, yep, we got four quarterbacks left, and – all right, you got to talk about Rodgers. And one thing I brought up, too, during the, that conversation is it just it's funny to me, and I don't know if this hits home with you at all, and, and you, know, you, you give me your two cents, but I, you know, we did Brady today at number eight, and I just thought one of the things I said about Brady was just that you know, I feel like the last you know, year or two, he's gotten a little bit of that, where he goes down with, in the flame. He's willing to go down with the flames. He's going to go oh, down yeah. throwing his best punches, where I don't know if I necessarily felt like that towards the end in New England. Right. Oh, I think I think it's a great analogy, and he is. I think he's a aggressive decision maker, and um, he shows it. The arm is tremendous still. The system fits it. Um, so giving time, he doesn't even need perf- perfection in the pocket, but he needs. A, if you give him just enough time, he can move. He can throw under pressure, and man, 
Paul, you know, I'm going to do a, tr- a little camp down in Kentucky, so I've been looking for how to do it the right way and all that stuff. Yeah. And I could just do Tom Brady. I yeah, mean, there's right? so many throws. Yeah. And every once in a while, which is funny, maybe I said this last time I was on, I think he just gets good protection, and it looks like somebody's going to be wide open on a deep curl or an in cut. And he just decides, well, this is an opportunity. I'm just going to throw it as hard as I can. Yeah, yeah right. right. And it's – and you can just see it on, you know, the film, everything. I should listen to it. You could probably hear it hitting the receiver's pads right. as he throws these. And, you know, and, you know every, every once in a while, you just got to swing the driver as hard as you can. Yeah. Right. He likes to do that. There's well, no question. And Dad, Dad, I'm sorry, Paul. I, I was, was, was going to say, and, Go and he, he does yeah. it without, like, winding up and, like, it can be screwing up his lower body. Right. Right. His lower body and his delivery looks the same, which is oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, all the more it's, impressive. It's, it's a, it's a, he's a machine. Yeah, there really is. He knows how to use his body. Dad, do you know why we're on this subject? Just to, because this is probably one thing I have to talk about a lot when I have to bring up Brady. You know, I I always went on radio or things like that to tell people like Brady's arm is so much better than you ever right. realize. Right. And, and, oh and, yeah, no, and, it, and, it really yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, Look, again, I don't put yeah. it in Dan Marino, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers class there. But it's not far off. I mean, or maybe it is in that class, Dad. I don't know. Well, but I know from early on yeah. in his career, me and you were both like, man, that fucking guy can throw the ball. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's a different thing than than Dan Marino and Aaron Rodgers. It's a little more. Um, a little longer. Well, yeah, graceful. it's just a little more controlled. They're just yeah. they were really quick, twitchy, and yeah. that's not Tom Brady. He right. gears it up, and then when he lets it go. And, and then it, the speed comes, but uh, you know it's a, it's a different motion, and he's you know he's tall. I heard you talking about big hands, tall, long arms, and he does a great job. You know, for anybody, he separates his upper body from his lower body, and that's why that arm is still what it is, and it just gets better. And I would think, and I'd say this without even, I think he's thrown the ball the last two years about as well as I've seen him throw it probably in his career. Yeah, I'm, I'm with uh, you. you. Know, yeah. I hear you. I yeah. know. It's hard to think back to what he was 20 years ago. But as I said, I did a New England game his rookie year up there. And Charlie Weiss was the offensive coordinator. I'm pretty sure he was then. And Charlie Weiss, as I told you, talking about this, and he goes, hey, you don't listen now, Brady. And I'm going, you know, like I said, I said, okay, you know, he, you draft him, whatever. I like him in this, but, you know, come on, let's don't go overboard with this. Because Drew Bledsoe was there, but little did we know, we found out pretty quick what uh, Charlie Weiss was seeing in practice every day, which yeah. we didn't. Yeah, right. I know. So that was cool. Yeah, that was cool. I know. It's a, you, You've always told me that, that there was a lot more love up there for Brady than the public realizes, and it was much closer to being Brady – you know, the starting quarterback, even before Mo Lewis knocked Drew Bledsoe's right. chest into next year. Right. That there was a, a part of the organization there that Dad says was very much like, I, I think Brady's the guy. We need to go there. But they had already invested into Drew Bledsoe, and I yeah. think maybe some ownership got involved in that conversation a little bit. Um, yeah, I think they just saw, one, they saw maybe more talent than they probably expected. Of course they did. They would If they thought he was more talented, they would have drafted him before the sixth round, I right, think, uh, right. whatever. But sometimes you got Drew Bledsoe, you're not really looking for that quarterback. Right. But also, everything you talk about, physically, this, his connection to players, his work habits, all this, and then all the things that both of you know that you can't talk about quarterbacks or you really can't put it on a paper and go, this is, it's just he has it. He's a leader of men. He influences people. And as I always say, it's a great element to every quarterback's game. And you got to take advantage of it. And, of course, he surely did. Yeah, no doubt. All right, so let's get into some of the Big Phil subjects, right? Oh. The Big Phil, I don't know what the hell he's going to talk about, but he sent me well, three listen. subjects, and yeah. we're going to go, and we're going to let him go. He's got a, well, this is, I'm his therapist. That's what I'm, I'm <laughs> glad. I'm his son and his therapist. Oh, the, yeah, right. the first okay. one, the first <laughs> one we want to hit on, you, 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 you wrote Baltimore wide receiver group to me in text. So let's oh, I did, the, yes. Yeah, because there was a lot. I mean, listen, that's, it's a good topic. I like it. I don't know exactly where you're going to go, but there's a lot of questions about it. And, you know, will receivers ever want to go there and play with, you know, Lamar Jackson in that offense? So where where'd you want to kind of go with this convo? I think Baltimore played their hand. Oh, they get rid of Hollywood Brown. Right. And whatever they thought of him, they, they let that go. And what do they do? Now you, you look at what they got. I, 
I've got to do this off the top of my head. That's now, all right. I can I, help you. But, Go ahead. But they got, you know, they got Mark Andrews, right. Nick Boyle at tight end. And what did they do? They didn't draft a wide receiver. No. They went out and drafted two tight ends. Exactly. So that's who they are. And you don't have to have two great wide receivers to get it done in the NFL. They're going to have a unique passing game with these tight ends. And, you know, Bateman, he's going to come along and be more of a factor this year. I do like um, DuVarnay. I liked him at Texas. I think he's a guy that can be just play a role. He's big, he's tough, he's fast. And that's going to come about. So we got the run game, Lamar Jackson, his movement, all that. But I think Greg Roman – it, just what they do, they can design a different passing game through their tight ends with the quarterback runs and a mobile quarterback. And this receiving group, it's good enough to get done what they need to get done. That's So I'm, I'm not going to even get on that bandwagon during the year. Oh, they should have got more receivers. No, this is who they are. This is what the team is built to do. Defense, it matches the offense, yeah. all that, and I just I expect their offense to be good. I yeah. really do. Yeah. So you th- think yeah, you, you think you're going to yeah. see like a, a lot of two, three tight end sets, maybe one receiver, two receiver, and you know one 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 play they might be in a power running set. The next next play it's Mark Andrews and you know one of the other pass catching tight ends split out at receiver with maybe one of the running backs split out, and they they're going to kind of play that style with that personnel is kind of what you're saying. You think? Yeah. I think so. I really do. You know, they got Patrick Ricard at fullback. I mean, right. he, I don't know what he is. He's just a, defense, he's a guard. A fullback, he's a tight a end. Guard. He's whatever you want him to be. <laughs> yeah. But all that, just, and not they're going to get back to the run game and the offense that we saw when they were breaking records with him running. I don't think they'll do that, but I just think it gives them, it's deception. Yes, That's what right. it's all about. Right. Formations, movement. They got all that. Go- they can create deception, and I think Lamar Jackson, without question, is going to play better than he did last year. Yeah, and it's not physical. You and I, Paul, we've talked about this. Yeah, go ahead, because I just- know people were a little disappointed. I had him at number ten, and uh, I'd like go ahead. You know, give me some of your thoughts there. Well, look, I think his arm. It, it, that's the other thing. It's I real. heard somebody say, well, something about his arm. I think Lamar has an explosive arm. Yes, he does. I don't know what everybody's – that's what I see. I can think back when you were doing your rate rankings for quarterbacks coming out in that draft, and I wasn't quite into it yet, and you were you know, all over Josh and Lamar, and I'm like, well, hell, let me look at them before. I, but I remember watching Lamar's tapes and just go, oh, my God, it's, he's so much more dynamic and I thought he was really dynamic, but when I watched the games in college, I was like, "Oh, he's unstoppable." Right. He was a, every play was a highlight reel. Yeah. But my point being, his arm is really good. The decision making will help the numbers, you know, be better so people can, you know. Well, that's why he got off that. last year, at least what, what I thought. And I know you, you way too thought. aggressive. Yes, yeah. way too aggressive right. decision making. Yeah. But he can change arm angles. He can do all that. Look, he can do it all. And I, I just think after last year, not making the playoffs, getting hurt, not playing his best, I mean, this is set up for Lamar Jackson and their offense, Greg Roman, Harbaugh, all of them, to turn this thing around. And I think they'll have a really good year. I think it's a situation, too, Phil, where, as you kind of pointed out, what I'm hearing is the receiving core, people want to talk about it. It, it. If it's a good supplement, that's a win because you have Lamar being Lamar. You have a good running game. You have wonderful tight ends. You have continuity with the offensive coordinator, which I think goes a long way as well with Roman and Lamar. And so yes. you, you throw the receivers, as long as they're not their liability, as long as they're pretty good, it's a win for that side of the ball. Yeah. Right? I mean, they right. didn't they didn't build this team and it's not built to be a high flying in the way that we think we perceive right. every offense has to be. Right. I mean, just look at the talent, look at wh- who they are on both sides of the ball. The Ozzy Newsom, uh, whatever you want to say, grand plan for that team is still there. They're big and they just get bigger. And, uh, again, I just think it's after last year and everything. And, and he, you know, and here's the last thing, and I'll, I'll let this go. Greg Roman, I work with people, oh, you know, oh, so, no, no, be quiet. He designed one of the greatest run games ever in the history of the game. So let's start there. And the passing game, when I watched them last year, I didn't sit, I don't remember going, oh, my gosh, this passing game, they have no chance. No, it was there. It was there to be had. 
and we saw Tyler Huntley come in and take yeah. advantage of it he to did. a certain degree too. Yeah, right. So it's there, and again, motivation by everybody down there this year, and the way the team's designed, and we don't have to build every team in the NFL strictly around the wide receiver right, group. Exactly. Yeah. So right. and they're not doing it. That makes them different. And I think that gives you an edge, too. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think the the phrase I used with Lamar to what you're saying with Tyler Hundley, just play it by the book a little bit more this year. Don't always look to make the magic play or the big play or the splash play. I think that came back and bit him in the ass a little bit a few times last year. No question. Yeah. You know you, you know that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like anything, any sport, playing golf, oh, I can hit it 300 yards, but I want to hit it 340 this time. Well, we know where it's going when you, you go for <laughs> – you know, extra things or looking for something that's really not there. And that's, again, that's, hey, a lot of guys, they can't throw. Paul, you know it. Christopher, I all, we all know it. We would call very average NFL throwers being kind, put up great numbers because they do it with schemes and the guys around them, but they do it with decision-making. Yeah, right. So they're not taking chances. They're playing not to throw interceptions. Right. And everybody gets crazy. Oh, look, he never turns the ball. Yeah, but he never makes any big plays. Okay. Right. Yeah. So there's a fine line there. You gotta you gotta know what it's about and and um Yeah. You know, that that goes for Lamar too. All right, so let's switch to another bird. We got the Ravens bird. Now let's go to the Eagles bird because that's another thing you wrote. You wanted to talk about the Eagles, some of the moves they made. It, it, oddly enough, we just ended up just talking about the NFC East a little bit before you came on. And I, I was saying, man, I, I don't know. If you made me pick right now, I think I'd pick the Eagles to win the NFC East with the way their their team looks on paper. But where did uh, where'd you want to go with this? Well, you know, I think you kind of hit it already. You've talked about Jalen Hurts. You talked about their offensive line, you know, how what you expect from it. Maybe maybe the best offensive line in the NFL. I just think everything about them, Jalen Hurts is going to be better. There's, I heard him talking about it, but Nick Sirianni was talking about it. More accurate, you know, the motion, everything. So they're kind of on top of this. Yeah. And so I look at that, and, and also their defense, just their coaching, the um, and I hate to go on these secondary things or whatever, but also just the feeling you get from the organization, the players, and all that. There's great harmony, and uh, the fact that they went to the playoffs last year. Yeah, they didn't beat any great teams, but they still won, and I expect them to make that jump. And it's going to be interesting. And getting AJ Brown, 100%. of course, that's going to change things. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. You, know, you just can't line up and say, oh, we're going to cover these guys one-on-one or play zone. Well, they'll, they're going to pick you apart, too, there. So, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Jalen Rager, whatever, he still can run. It's, it it yeah. hasn't worked for him yet, yeah. but Quez I, I just see a lot of things to really, really like about the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, no so. no doubt. I mean, again, I think you, Dallas Goddard, the hell of a tight end. You know, Miles Sanders, a good running back. They assign Hassan Reddick in the offseason to add to the pass rush. They, dry, they draft maybe the freakiest defense alignment in the draft in Jordan Davis. So now they got Well, another, there you go. Yeah, yeah. They got another freak of nature on the inside. They just signed James freaking Bradbury from yeah. the Giants, who was right. a free agent, and got him for a steal for that type of money this late in the game. So, I, Dad, to your point, I'm just echoing or, or supporting it. No, it's great. And I'm, I'm and with I, you there I, all the way. They're a lot like if you look at last year, I, we, I kept looking at the Dallas Cowboys and go, this roster. And, you know, too, you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, just a lot of guys that they've drafted that are just getting better for them. Right. So they're another team that's kind of, you know, hit the draft and you start looking through their roster and you go, man, there's a lot of guys that they picked in first, second, third, and fourth rounds that are – you know, good contributors for no or even better than that. Sitting no. here, listen to you two guys talk about the the Eagles. I'm I'm, I'm a little sorry. I said that the the Cowboys are the class. You're ready to get on points ten minutes bet. ago. You're ready to get a points bet and start making some moves. On I the need Eagles. to rethink this. Yes, yeah, yeah you do. All well, right. I don't know if you need to rethink it, Paul. I don't think it's like we're sitting there and going, I, I, how much money would I bet on it? Uh, the Philadelphia over the Cowboys? Not a lot. A little I'm bit. just. It's an early preseason, middle of the summer. Not yeah. even the middle of the summer yet. Uh, prediction, not a prediction, just some of your thoughts when Something you look at it on about. paper, yeah. and we know there's a lot to come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, right. but my last one is yeah, this is the, is wanna... the Miami Dolphins. Oh. And, I mean, look, first, first off, Denver, oh, we're a quarterback <laughs> away. So they took care of that. It's going to be all about Russell Wilson. We know that. Uh, that's one thing. Buffalo, Jim Kelly was on the show with us 
after they lost that game to Kansas City, and I said, Jim, he follows the team close. It, what would be one thing about Buffalo that you think, and he, before we could even get out of our mouth, he goes, edge rusher. So will Von Miller come through and be the impact player for them that they really need rushing the passer? Or can one of the guys they've drafted in the last couple of years just keep getting better and come through? But I think Von Miller's a huge key to that football team. If they could pressure the quarterback with the pass rush, then I think they will be the best team in football. Yeah, I hear you there. I mean, a lot of people think that, and I think that you're right. That was a huge move for their football team, no doubt about it. But right. here we go. Yeah. I'll ask you a question real quick. Okay, Name me the weak spot on the Miami Dolphins. I I I know. I know. It comes I mean, to mind. there is nothing. Well, yeah, you're gonna think Except. of yeah the you know you're, the question mark is okay. You have the offensive line play, but we expect that to be better. And then the quarterback. Not that it's a weak spot, but it's a question mark. I would say. Well, you know, I'm trying to think of how to say this. Um, some people are not very good looking. Okay, let's put it that way. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm not going to say that I say that every day. I look in the mirror, but uh, well, whatever. But <laughs> when they put great clothes on, and all of a sudden you go, damn, he looks good. Yeah, or right. he, she, whatever. Yeah. And I think that's what they're doing with Tua. Yes, so right, right. our perception of what we think of uh, Tua could change dramatically as this year goes along because I think it's going to be a lot of easy opportunities. Right. And I heard someone on TV the other day say some things. I went, oh, my gosh, come on. I, it, you know, I, I go, I watch too much TV as I'm doing work sometimes. But he is accurate. His throwing motion is, is extremely repeatable. Yes, you know, he, right. he can get rid of the football. Yep. He really only lacks what his decision-making, I think, is good. And, of course, his, I think the only downfall is, of course, the strength of his arm. But that really might not be a factor because we know with Tyreek Hill and Waddle, this group they got, and I think they did a really good job with the offensive line. You know, as you look at it, you know, yeah. I think we all trust Armstead. And then Eichenberg will be – is that how you say his name? Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, Eichenberg. Yep. Sign yeah. Connor Williams, too. Yeah, Connor Williams, just a solid player. Right. All that That's all they really need up there. The running back situation, they fixed that, I think. They might have the best corner tandems, a tandem in the NFL. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, geez. Yeah. Hey, the defensive line – as I looked at it the other day, it's I real. don't like it. I love it. I know. Christian Wilkins is already one of the best D tackles in football. That Jalen Phillips has gone on the on the way to being one of the better pass rushers in football. You're right. Well, They're stacked. There's nothing to not well, like about it. Raekwon Davis, Agba. I just never forget. Yeah. Yeah. Raekwon Davis, like, when he comes in there, he looks like a giant. Lots yeah. of like, And the well, linebacking group is good. Yeah, it's, I know. It, it, we, we don't know their names, but I know last year I kept going, who the hell's Van Ginkle? Good, yeah. So I kept going. Who <laughs> yeah. Do you think? <laughs> but that he the, proved it out. He's a really good player. And and they kept the defensive coordinator, which I think was – he's still Josh Boyer. So yeah, that was he's huge. done a tremendous job. And that defense, I even wrote that down in some notes just to, during the year. Mm. Man, let's. I would hate to face their defense just because of all that blitzing and everything they do. Yes – there are certain teams that kind of took advantage of that and beat them and got them out of it. But I think there was only – I think Buffalo did it. Um, but, you know, that's about it. Not many teams really tore up that blitzing defense or had answers to it because I think it's extremely complicated, and they do so many different things yeah, out of it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I'll never forget what Todd Bowles said to me once when he's a defensive coordinator in Arizona. And I said, you know, Todd, if you blitz the – a quarterback, and you don't get there and he makes a play, does that change? He goes, oh, no, no. He goes, you know, quarterbacks hate it when you blitz them, so I'm going to keep blitzing them. <laughs> and I just like, <laughs> so there is, there's a little excitement, as we know as quarterbacks, that, oh, here comes the blitz, I got a chance. But also you're like, can't we just see some normal mm -hmm. coverages every once in a no, while no so doubt. I can relax and read it and throw it? So that's kind of what I think about when I see the Miami Dolphins. I think they're very dangerous I've seen the overs and unders surprised it's so low that people just don't have the expectations maybe that I do. Yeah. But I think and this the, team, the division, I think, hurts them too a little. That's that's another part of it probably. And, yeah, no, I know it does. But, you know, I think they can hold their own. I just do. Yeah. Do, do you think they have the second they did last or the third year? best team in that division, Phil? What's that? Do you think they're the second or the third best team in that division? Well, it would be, I, I would just say it's a tie for second, and maybe I would put Miami second over New England. Okay. Yes. 
And you know the New York Jets. Look. Yeah, they're better. Another terrible schedule. They're going to. And as I heard somebody say, if they get, you know, they have a bad year, the Jets might get rid of Zach Wilson and draft a quarterback next year because the quarterback draft is so great next year. And I just want to go. Oh Mm. my God! I don't. I don't. I don't even got to say his name. Oh, please get a clue. If Zach Wilson does nothing this year, he still will be the quarterback of the New York Jets next year. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. What do you think about that? I, well, yeah, I would think so. I mean, it, to me, he, you know, again, you know, I'm a big fan, and what he showed at the end of the last year, yeah. I and mean, I, I don't have any doubt that he'll be better, and that they're going to be a little bit more of a dangerous offense this year. So, yeah, yeah, the, the, the schedule's tough, but yeah. listen, it, the team is getting better, and I don't care what he does, we're still not going to be able to deny his talent. And you know, I think finally people. A little bit got off of it towards the end of the last year when they'd see some of these wow plays that he makes. Well, and he makes a lot of them. But, uh, of course, he needs to be more consistent. But So that, that's interesting. It is a tough division, but I think Miami can hang with anybody in that. I think they can play with the Buffalo Bills now, too. Yep. Because right. the wide receiving group is going to change the way you play offense. We yeah. know that's the easiest thing to say of all. It's real. And Tyree Kill, as I talked to the Cincinnati Bengals and they were playing them in the championship game, they basically said, when you play them, if you think you're chasing these guys across the formation, you're delusional. Right. Mm. And you can't do it, and especially with Tyreek Hill. So uh, he's going to have that impact uh, down in Miami for sure. And what did, what did, uh, why did the Cincinnati Bengals have so much success against them in the second half? Because they had people waiting on all the crossers, right. and they changed up their defense, and they played just three rushers, and it was, I think, a very complicated, well-designed defense against Kansas City. Maybe other people will try to duplicate it more this year, but uh, I think that's just some of the problems you run into when you play these fast teams that have wide receivers like Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill. Even Cedric Wilson, all this, it's just hard to chase them all over the field, that's for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. And then you got Mike McDaniel, who's going to be pretty creative, too. All right, Dad, so there you go. There's... Well, yeah, I can't wait to see Mike McDaniel, just what they do on offense, the run game, how it's designed, all that. You know, he got Chase Edmonds, Mostert, you know, and Sony Michelle showed that he can be that one cut, smash it up in there guy. So right. they, they kind of took care of the the running back situation, too. So that'll be – uh, fun to watch. All right, two birds and a fish. That's who Phil likes this year. He likes the Ravens, the Eagles, and the fishy dolphins. That's right. They're a yeah, mammal. just just something different. That's they all. Are. I don't know if I yeah. would. I'm gonna. They're, I'm not gonna wager any on them, but you know. No, we'll but I. They're t- yes. I. I mean, you answered questions, and I think they're questions that people have talked about a lot with those three football teams for sure. I'll, I'll make this real quick. Yeah. So we got a team that lost in the Super Bowl. Then we lost a really tough one in the Super Bowl. If our defense could have stopped them, we could have won. And you know, but let's don't blame them. And then we got a team that loses a tough one in the championship game. Well, let's get rid of the quarterback, and that would be San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, sometimes that argument's tough. And we've seen it before. Trent Dilfer lost his job after the win of the Super Bowl. Right. Not only did he lose it, I think he wasn't even on the team, was he? No, no, they let him go all together and brought in Elvis Gerback. That's yeah, I know. Just... How about that? That's so, crazy. Yeah, you never know, but it's. Hey, I understand it. They put all that money and hope into Trey Lance, and I I do think it's just going to make them a totally different team. There's no doubt about that. And I'm interested to see it. And I heard you say it earlier. It is true, Paul and Christopher. The San Francisco 49ers are good, creative, fast. They got everything. So it's that's going to be good for them. So, yeah, all right, I'll let you guys go. You're the man, good Dad. To talk Thanks to you, so Phil. much. All right, seriously. All good talking. Have a good day. Always, man. All right, Have Dad. See you, man. See you, Phil. See him. Big there Phil. he is. Yeah. Big Phil. Yeah. Three subjects. He hit five. That's what he does. That's good. I know. I wanted to get into the San Francisco quarterback thing with him a little bit. I thought we were going to it's go there. It's such a fun exercise. Just yes. as a fan, you're listening. You're like, oh, I want to follow up on that. And he's off to the next thing. Oh, yes, I know. You can't stop him. You, try you can't, to, try you to can't jump contain in. the guy. No, no doubt about just it. Just listen. Um, yeah. All right. So my computer just went dead. Uh, yeah. So I can't see my computer anymore. I've got you covered. But, yep. But uh, the re- okay. we'll, we'll go ahead. You can recap the four. Talking with Pete. Yeah. Yes. Recap the four. Right. Started out, as I said, flame throwing. Tom Brady at eight. Okay. We had Brady at eights. We had Russell Wilson seven. Matthew Stafford six. And Aaron Rodgers at five. 
not just giant names, but I mean guys who have fallen, guys who have risen. You could make an argument they all could be higher, which I think some people will do. Sure. And I thought you had great conviction as to why. Because I kind of asked that with all of them. We get to this point where anybody we're talking about in the top ten probably could be top five. You sure? Certain. Try certain to work smart in there. people okay, might come, think, yeah. How come not a little higher? Exactly. And you had good responses, all of it. Thanks, so, man. I mean, yeah. hey, listen, it's it's not easy. It's nitpicky, right? When you get to these type of guys, and I think I think you got to find you know the areas and where to be nitpicky and where to actually differentiate with them. I will say though, and I think I told you this at the start of this. I, to me, that I, I as I got done and going through players and about like the top five was easy. It was. Really? It was. I there is which stretch was the hardest. Well, I mean, you know, the stretch we kind of went through right. You know, basically like six through twelve to fourteen is mm. hard, just because like like you said, the, the 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 differentiating factors are so minute. So that's always hard. But these ones. You know, I, I did not find the top five in ter- terribly hard. I did not. Again, did I go into it thinking Rodgers was going to be five? Absolutely not. But when I came d- came away, I came away going, I feel really comfortable about my top five. And to me, the four guys that we haven't talked about, to me, are clearly the four best quarterbacks in the sport. I do. And I would even say that you know, they're in a little bit of a tier in their own, in my eyes. They yeah. are. You know, again, that's no disrespect to Rodgers and Matthew say, Stafford. I was going to say, even with Rodgers at five. I know. Stafford I think they're six. a little bit of a tier of their own. Hmm. You know, I, I think these guys can kind of bring together some of the things we talked about with Dad, where they can be surgical, they can be smart, but yet they can also be aggressive and take chances, but they're calculated in the right moments. And maybe where Rodgers lacks in the aggressive and taking those chances in the right moment, you know, then there's Stafford who takes those chances, but maybe right. needs to dial it back a hair and all that. To me, these guys have just the right mix of really doing it all and are special, special players. And we'll unveil that yes. top four coming, coming next week. I think it was right before we started this or right after we started it, we kind of threw this out there for the homies to predict the top ten. Yeah. And that, I think there were over a thousand that yeah, was. threw their hat in the ring to try and get it. I think Pete, did you just tell me that somebody nailed six through ten? Kari Kari Demos, Demos got six, six through, through ten. ten. But he had, had the Burrow he had five. Burrow okay. at five, so he missed there. So And I don't think yes. anybody got one through ten, Pete, right? Nobody got one through ten. No, nope. not perfect. No, okay. names were right. Maybe top five was right, but then the bottom six, the names were right, but not in the right order. Right. We do have a number of people with the correct top fives and top threes, though, that okay. we're going to show some love to oh, for cool. sure. No okay. doubt about it. We got do to. that next week. Yeah, we'll do that next week. Uh, but hey, I appreciate. It. We didn't get to some of the questions today. Uh, blame Phil. He talks too much. All right. But we will get to them because we had some good ones. And I know this is going to be a little bit of a, a controversial part. And even last pod was probably some things that people want to talk about a little bit there. Yeah. So. We can hit on that. Please do. Please keep sending in the questions. I love them. And again, next week on Thursday, I I'm in. You're in. We can do a shit ton of questions. We can do right? it. That's, that's what we should do. I mean, Just again, like, I think what, what we're going to do Monday, okay, oddly enough, we will not be doing the podcast on Monday. Right. It's going to be coming Tuesday next week. Monday, I'm going to hang out with a guy named Joe Burrow. No, nah, no big that's deal. Good. I don't know if you've heard. I've kind of a big deal around here. Yeah, but I'm going to go hang out with him. So that's why we won't be doing the Monday podcast. Like but it'll sit be back down Tuesday. interview. Like what are you guys sit doing? Sit down interview. Golf, what hanging are you doing? out. I, I don't know. I got a good allotted amount of time here. A lot amount of time with him. So well done. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. We're going to do a little bit for the pod, a little bit for Sunday night football. Uh, we'll see where it goes. But I'm looking forward to that. So Tuesday is the day. Okay. That you will hear the final rankings. And we'll get into that. And then, of course, yes, the Thursday pod, I think we'll do a lot of discussing about the rankings yeah. and dissect it a little bit more. Good. All right. There it is. All right. You the man. There's the show. There's the blue man group next to me. He know, did a great right? job today. And I am the all black. Maybe all I'm black. going to a funeral. Maybe I am. All right. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Have a good weekend. Be safe out there. Enjoy the summer weather. Paulie, you the man. Thanks for driving the ship as always. Big lefty. Always good to hang out. With See you. Man. Chris Sims unbuttoned. Thanks to Point and Spent. Peace out. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.